Thank you. We're Brainiac, the king of pop. Brainiac, the king of pop. F Michael Jackson. F Elvis Presley. Brainiac, the king of pop. Often dressed in striking thrift store shirts and leather jackets, Brainiac were a 90s band that looked like they'd stepped out of the 70s, but they were making music from a time that was yet to come, all while furiously waving the flag for their hometown of Dayton, Ohio, also home of the Breeders and Guided by Voices. Despite the stature of those two bands, Brainiac may have still actually been, at least for a short time, the most popular band in Dayton, buoyed by the charisma and unbridled enthusiasm of frontman Tim Taylor, sometimes known as Timmy, possibly because Tim Taylor was also the main character in Home Improvement. Uh? Taylor was the son of a jazz guitarist, and he seemed pretty confident with the instrument himself. But what he brought to Brainiac that really set them apart from everyone else was two things. Firstly, his wild, dynamic vocal delivery, favouring extremes like deep rhythmic speaking and squeaky head voice, often in the same song with no mid-range in between. And secondly, the real secret weapon, or at least semi-secret, is Moog and Oberheim synthesizers, which he supposedly plugged his vocal mics into to add weird modulations to his voice as well. Those around them felt that Brainiac were due to become the next major indie rock success story. However, the band's rise came to a sudden and tragic end when Taylor was killed in a single vehicle car accident in 1997. After starting to listen to Brainiac sometime in the past year, and being pretty much blown away instantly, I've wanted to make a video on this criminally underrated band for a couple of months now. So allow me to introduce the band's best known lineup. John, I play the gu guitar. I'm Juan and I play the bass. I'm Tyler and I rat the tat the cat. My name is Tim and I play the synthesizer. Taylor, Monasterio and Trent were founding members of Brainiac in 1992, while Schmersel joined the band for their second album, 1994's Bonsai Superstar. The album is a hyperactive crash course in what made Brainiac the band that they were. While the bass and drums are pretty restrained, Schmersel and Taylor's hack and slash guitars play melodic lines that sound like they should make absolutely zero sense, and yet they just do. And when the synths are featured, they generally have the same reckless approach to melody as the guitars. To top it all off, there's a fair share of vocals warped beyond recognition and sounds that are just completely fried by lo-fi equipment. Or just the sound of the equipment itself in the case of Meat Hook Manicure's microphone feedback ending. Not a guitar amp feeding back, just a cheap shitty microphone. Bonsai Superstar melts together post-punk's wiry guitars, post-hardcore's meaty rhythm section, new waves, kooky synths and pogoing beats, maybe even a hint of rockabilly in Taylor's hooting and hollering. So basically, there's no point in trying to pigeonhole this band in any way. They just sound like... Brainiac. Amongst all the barnstorming and bouncing off the walls, there's songs like Flypaper, where Taylor sings like Pepe Le Pew doing falsetto over a languid instrumental backing complete with brushed drums, likely drawing from Taylor's jazz upbringing. Like I said, good luck trying to pigeonhole these guys. Fucking with the altimeter ditches drums and bass entirely in favour of a lone chugging guitar, beatboxing, and samples from a record made for teaching a parrot to talk. A bunch of bizarre, dissonant elements that together create something grotesquely amazing. Pretty much the essence of Brainiac as a whole. Give me some company, sir. There's also a full-blown sound collage called Transmissions After Zero, maybe enjoyable for some people in a fitter, happier kind of way, not really my sort of thing. And closing track Collide has a dreamy delivery, however everything is also massively distorted to a headache-inducing level, which is a bit of a deal-breaker on its own, but the song itself also just isn't particularly memorable enough to justify that. But even with those two tracks considered, Bonsai Superstar is a wildly inventive album from a band that truly doesn't give a fuck what anyone thinks of them. Now going back to their debut album, Smack Bunny Baby from 1993, with Schmersel not in the picture yet, the main guitarist on this album was co-founding member Michelle Bodine. If you hear Bonsai Superstar before you hear this album, which is what I did, then Smack Bunny Baby may come off as a hell of a surprise. Guitars playing standard chords, clear verses and choruses, Tim actually singing like a regular human being, in a way, this album may actually be the strangest Brainiac album of them all. You've still got some scronky guitar riffs, those wacky synths, and while Taylor wasn't going to extremes like the deep mumbling or nasal falsetto, he sure loved to scream. And with even more digital manipulation added to his voice, sometimes when he screams it sounds like what you hear in the Call of Duty Zombies moments. <laughs> 
Makes me think of how Mike Patton went on to do some weird video game voice work. Maybe if Timmy was still around, he would have gone down a similar path. But beyond all those quirks, Smack Bunny Baby is generally closer to more typical alt-rock via post-punk. Meanwhile, closing track Get Away is basically power pop, purely melody focus. The one song that really hints at Brainiac's brain-melting future is Drag, the most aggressive song on the album, which does a nice job of building and releasing tension in its quiet, loud dynamics, and Taylor's vocal performance is full of demented yowling, with a bizarre pitch-jumping effect added to his voice at times for good measure. It's certainly a great, fun album, and it shows that Taylor can carry a more conventional tune pretty well, but I guess they were still yet to find some of the secret ingredients that made them really special. Most of the album's shortcomings purely stem from the fact that it's in the creative shadow of the albums that follow, though I do feel like some of the songs can get a bit formulaic at times. If you listen to Bonsai Superstar before you hear Smack Bunny Baby, then it may not be quite what you want to hear from this band. And perhaps it could go the other way. If you hear Smack Bunny Baby first, then you may be put off a bit by the zany, freewheeling nature of Bonsai Superstar, because they're two pretty different worlds. So Smack Bunny Baby really puts into perspective what John Schmersel brought to Brainiac. Michelle Bodine would play both noisy and standard stuff, even a proper melodic guitar solo at one point, but on Bonsai Superstar, I swear there isn't a single conventional guitar chord played for the entirety of the album. Not even a damn power chord, because for John, that shit is for poses, apparently. I think that philosophy may have loosened up a bit after this album, though those power chords are still basically few and far between. After Bonsai Superstar, Brainiac's first release was the three-song EP Internationale, produced by fellow celebrated Daytonian Kim Deal. Opening track, Go Freaks Go, is classic Brainiac. Jolting rhythms, squiggly synth, and Taylor's vocal is the absolute definition of sass. Surely the official theme song for Brainiac, if there ever was one. Well, actually, one of their earliest songs had Theme from Brainiac as its subtitle. But Go Freaks Go could absolutely be their motto, at least. And like classic Brainiac, they completely invert that style on the next track, Silver Iodine, with Taylor's haunting vocal registering just over a whisper, battling against throbbing, droning electronics, garbled samples, and other mysterious bursts of distortion. As brilliant as it is disturbing. <laughs> International certainly set the tone for their next full-length album. I better gratuitous plug for our CD, Hissing yes. Craig's Aesthetic. <laughs> now, how was that pronounced again? <laughs> Hissing Prigs in Static Couture. More scrambled guitar riffs, more lo-fi production techniques, more of Taylor taking every vocal approach imaginable, and electronics playing their usual supporting role. But what really sticks out is that the songs feel more direct and focused, like a return to the more structured songs of Smack Bunny Baby, without losing their newfound adventurousness. Their cover art was even starting to become starker in comparison to the somewhat scattered design of their first two albums, plus the spelling of words with both letters and numbers in a robotic sort of way, altogether adding further to to the band's retro-futuristic feel. They put numbers and stuff in there, so, you know, that's because What's we're... the number system? Oh, yeah! In true Brainiac fashion, the opening track of Hissing Prigs is called Indian Poker Part 3, with Part 2 coming later in the track list. And that one's just another distorted sound collage that has no real link to Part 3. And naturally, Indian Poker Part 1 does not exist. In even truer Brainiac fashion, Indian Poker Part 3 only lasts 52 seconds, but with that buzzy guitar lead-in and hypnotic blissed out vocal line, they make very good use of that short time. Then the next track is called Pussyfootin', and what better name could you possibly give for a song like this that absolutely struts? That ties into something else that separates Hissing Prigs from the albums before it. There are some absolute rock-solid driving rhythms. If Bonsai Superstar had a lot of head-banging kind of moments, then Hissing Prigs often manages to be worthy of both head-banging and foot-stomping. Both Juan Monasterio and Tyler Trent feel like they have a bigger presence in their music than ever before. Trent's drumming was always pretty muscular, but on here, he is at his absolute pulverizing best. If the drums were recorded any differently, or were just played by someone else, then I wouldn't be surprised if in most cases these songs would suffer a lot as a result. 
and Monasterio delivers some killer bass lines with a proper moment in the spotlight on the nimble main riff of Kiss Me You Jacked Up Jerk. Some songs like This Little Piggy and 70 Kilogram Man retain the barely there melodicism common on much of Bonsai, and Nothing Ever Changes even sounds like it could have been recorded during the Bonsai sessions. But this album manages to take much of what Brainiac had done up to that point and instead make it 10 times more infectious. Vincent Come On Down is Brainiac at the near peak of their powers. Trent's walloping beat, Monasterio's tight licks, a synth that sounds like it's spawned out of a 1950s B-movie horror film, and Taylor barking orders at whoever this Vincent guy is. Absolutely fucking slaps. I don't think there's anything else that really needs to be said about that one. Strung is a song in the same mould as Silver Iodine from International, only this time with a weird screaming sample thrown in managing to be just as hauntingly mesmerising. Meanwhile, the other two more experimental pieces on the album, The Vulgar Trade and Indian Poker Part 2, have very little value if I'm honest. But the best is saved for last. I am a cracked machine, with a pummeling rhythm section, malfunctioning synths, and Taylor shredding the fuck out of his throat, encapsulating how this band created some absolutely heavy shit. And that's while barely adding any distortion to their guitars, which is something that I often associate with heavy music. So I guess it just stems from the sheer physical power the band were able to apply to their music. Undoubtedly, certain people will be won over more by Bonsai's generally looser approach, but for me, Hissing Prigs in Static Couture, with a more equal balance between their jarring side and their ability to craft great pop hooks, was Brainiac's winning formula. So that album would turn out to be their last full-length release, and I Am A Cracked Machine would have made for a brilliantly crushing swan song. However, a year later, the band would release an EP called Electroshock for President, and the shift between Smack Bunny Baby and Bonsai Superstar was no longer Brainiac's most drastic change to their overall sound. Suddenly, the electronics had taken the lead role, but instead of Taylor's usual zany Moog tones, many of the synths are cold and calculated, with drum machines often replacing Trent's live drumming, and even bass lines covered by synths for the most part. The EP is introduced by the arpeggiated bleeps and rumbling background of fresh new eyes, evoking a similar feel to Silver Iodine and Strung, but with Taylor raising his voice, and the stark backing pushes that even further to the forefront. Flash Ram sees his voice get fully vocoded for the first time over a lurching bass synth and quirky melodies all over the place. While the glitchy Fashion 500 continued their fascination with obscure samples. Then you have the turnover, which isn't too far from Fresh New Eyes, just without Taylor raising his voice. For My Beloved, which is a 51 second drum machine and tape manipulation freakout. And closing track Mr. Fingers brings some more familiar Brainiac territory, with prominent electric guitar, mostly live drums, and Juan getting to play bass guitar for the only time on the record. Also, Timmy brings back his classic sassy falsetto just this once. But then all those instruments suddenly drop out and give way to a completely electronic backing, which may suggest that they wanted to completely abandon that typical rock instrumentation completely from then on. Electroshock for President, while it ends too soon, perhaps even by Brainiac's usual standards, is pretty damn intriguing and sounds great. And this was supposedly intended to be a showcase of their next album, what would have been their major label debut, as the band were potentially within a week of signing for Interscope Records, who at that point had had some success with alternative bands like Nine Inch Nails and Bush. But as you can tell, fate had other ideas. Schmersel later recalled that in one of his last moments with Taylor, Tim showed John and Juan that the trunk surrounding the engine of his 20-year-old Mercedes-Benz had completely rusted out. Unbeknownst to Taylor and those around him, he'd been suffering the effects of carbon monoxide poisoning from the engine's fumes. And on the morning of May 23rd, 1997, the fumes finally got the better of him, knocking him out behind the wheel, causing the vehicle to crash and burst into flames. Between the gas, the impact, and the resulting fire, there was pretty much no chance of survival. Tim Taylor was dead at the age of 28. And without him, Brainiac itself was also dead. Just three days later, famed singer-songwriter Jeff Buckley made his grief over the death of Taylor very apparent during a live show. Eerily, in another three days, Buckley himself would die in an accidental drowning. Over the years that followed, a handful of bands referred to Brainiac as an influence, most notably Trent Reznor, who stated that he used Electroshock for President as a sound reference while producing the 2005 Nine Inch Nails album with Teeth. But the celebration of Brainiac really got into full swing earlier this year, 
with the release of a documentary called Brainiac Transmissions After Zero. The film showcased even more famous Brainiac fans, including Cedric Bixler Zavala of the Mars Volta, Buzz Osborne of the Melvins, and musically talented Saturday Night Live star Fred Armisen. As an added bonus, Luke Skywalker himself showed off his fandom promoting the doco when it was in its Kickstarter stage. They've been showing screenings of the movie in various worldwide cinemas for nine freaking months now, and it's not up for streaming anywhere yet, so I haven't gotten a chance to see it. They did actually show it in Australia, which isn't something I was expecting, but it was in Sydney. Missed it by that much. And around the same time of that film's release, the surviving members of Brainiac, who apart from Spursal had mostly distanced themselves from music entirely after the band's collapse, played some shows under the Brainiac name for the first time in 22 years, with various guests filling out the vocal and synth duties. The band definitely still lives on as hometown heroes of Dayton, but despite all the famous names that have sung their praises, it seems like they're sorely underappreciated outside of it. Obviously, they haven't been completely ignored. I mean, the first time I ever heard of Brainiac was from seeing this Pitchfork article, and they also shouted out Hissing Prigs and Bonsai Superstar in their top 100 albums of the 1990s list. But that's two of just five articles mentioning the band in Pitchfork's entire recent history, with no full album reviews. In fact, I've searched Brainiac Review on YouTube, and all I can find are the usual song uploads, live footage, and interviews. No videos of people not associated with Brainiac talking about them at length or discussing one or more of their albums. Not even a guy with like 30 subs or so. When there's a good possibility that I'll be the first person to make a video on a band in this format ever. That's when you know shit is done fucked up. I can't remember the last time I heard a band exude this much raw energy. They didn't need to turn everything up to 11 constantly, just the sheer power of the music is a sonic punch in the face. And the live footage of the band online confirms that their energy was also evident in their stage presence. While Tim Taylor is singled out as their primary life force, and was certainly a freak of nature, it would feel amiss to solely attribute Brainiac's greatness to him. Every member of the band was completely tuned into one another, interlocking to form a single larger-than-life unit. I'd say credit's also due to Eli Jenny, the producer of all three of their albums, for allowing the band's creative spirit to flow, and making everything sound good as hell in the process. And we should make it less about the potential that was never fulfilled, the front man's life cut short, the great band that people people just kind of forgot about, and instead focus on Brainiac in the present and the future. After all, this music still sounds like it could have been released at any time in the past two decades, and maybe even the next two. So thanks for watching, feel free to click like if you like Brainiac, subscribe for more Brainiac, and Brainiac, 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 just fucking listen to Brainiac for fuck's sake. <laughs>